Item number, SCP-6596, Security Level 4. Containment Class, Keter. Disruption Class, Vlam. Risk Class, Warning. Special Containment Procedures. Direct containment of SCP-6596 has proven impossible at the current moment. However, due to its relationship with Site-120, SCP-6596 does not pose a threat to the Veil. This combined with SCP-6596's appearance ban has shifted focus from direct capture and containment during a manifestation to temporary defensive measures. The Department of Sciences is currently working in conjunction with the Site-120 personnel to develop a permanent method of containment. If when development concludes and is deemed successful, the method of containment is to be deployed at all Foundation sites as a precautionary measure against further attacks should SCP-6596 shift focus from Site-120 to other locations. Description SCP-6596 is a vaguely humanoid bipedal entity resembling the skeleton of an adult horse. A white cloth covers the majority of the entity's anatomy. However, video footage and eyewitness accounts can ascertain that SCP-6596 possesses a pair of forelimbs and hands along with two hoofed legs, all constructed of bone. In place of eyes, two silver-colored glass bubbles are implanted into the eye sockets of SCP-6596. Various decorations such as strings, ornaments, and bows have been placed along SCP-6596's body. Despite its appearance, SCP-6596's senses are not hindered by its state. Instead, SCP-6596 is sapient, sentient, and capable of speech through unknown means. While its exact origin is unknown, SCP-6596 is referenced in multiple texts and tomes recovered in the wild woods above the chimney as a trickster entity representative of gluttony and greed. Additional information is pending further investigation. SCP-6596 is able to instantaneously manifest and demanifest at will both short and long ranges. Its reflexes are enormously sharp, allowing it to easily evade attackers, obstructions, and or traps. It is hypothesized that there is a pocket dimension located under the entity's cloth, believed to be located at a chest area, which it employs for storage purposes. SCP-6596 uses a combination of these capabilities to terrorize Foundation Site-120, located in Rostokova, Poland. Since 2005, Site-120 has encountered SCP-6596 during the first week of December. Each encounter follows a similar structure. Between 0800 and 2000, Surveillance systems will be alerted to an unknown entity at one of the site's entrances. Contact will be attempted, wherein SCP-6596 will respond to any questions with a melodic rhyming statement, concluding with the request to enter the site, as well as for food and beverages. Responding personnel are expected to respond with a similar rhyming statement. If the responding personnel does not repute in a timely manner, stutters fails to create a suitable rhyme, and or is not jolly enough, SCP-6596 will demanifest from its location outside of the site and re-manifest within the cafeteria. SCP-6596 will proceed to ransack the cafeteria, stealing any and all food, including that in freezers and refrigerators, before demanifesting from the site. The following video transcript provides an example SCP-6596 event. Transcript Forward The following is a transcript of the fourth SCP-6596 event. After the third attack, Site-120 attempted to contain SCP-6596 through a variety of obstructions placed to hinder it, primarily by removing all food and food products from the site. Begin log 1001 
Sight surveillance systems are alerted to an unknown entity at the northwest entrance gate. It's here! Hey! It's here! Get in position! 1002. SCP-6596 swivels its head back and forth. It notices the security camera pointed at it. It proceeds to snap its jaw four times. Who's doing the rhyme this year? Where the hell is Jacob? Here, here, my bad. Here's the microphone. Get ready. All right. Hello, my dear friends. It's so grand to return. I come with a quandary, one I'm sure that you've heard. My belly is empty. My throat remains dry. This comfort unbearable. I nearly might cry. My thankful gratitude will be yours all this night. If you gave me a drink and a tasty bite. Megan unfolds his script and activates the microphone. You're here again! What a jolly good surprise! You're standing right before our very eyes! 1004. SCP-6596 begins to sway to Dr. Reagan's rhythm. Look to your left and now you're right. I'm sorry you're not coming in tonight. A joyful show for the jolly times now. Your hesitation, I think, does tonight I'll allow. But tonight is today, my oft-confused friends. If I stay out till then, I'll meet my sad end. A warm bite to eat and a cool swig of ale is all that I need. I've become oh so frail. Oh, give me a spot in your lovely abode. I swear I'll swift exit. I hate to freeload. <coughs> I'm sorry to say, and this might come to shock, but your presence in here is under a block. You've barged, intruded, and stolen, and taken. Every year for the last four, we've suffered a break-in. Oh, pretty please, sir, don't you have any mercy? I hate to have caused such a harsh controversy. For all I ask is for love and compassion. If all the power, I'm stuck in poor fashion. In the freezing cold of this sad grey land. And all I request is you lend me a hand. I'm so sorry, my friend, but this can't be allowed. Because at this time, we have such a large crowd. Of such merry folk, all dancing and singing. To golly joy. Crap. 10.13. SCP-6596 manifests from its location outdoors. Security team spread through the cafeterias. Damn it, Jacob! How do you screw this up at this point? You got that far! Don't look at me, lame the dumbass script buyers who put jolly good in here six times. Six friggin' times, Dan! Say that six times and live them right now! 1016, SCP-6596 is located in the floor one cafeteria. Security teams surround the entity, which is unfazed. SCP-6596 proceeds to inspect the empty food containers. 1017. An agent commands SCP-6596 to cease its movement and remain still. SCP-6596 ignores the agent and sits advancing behind the food counters and into the storage compartment. 1018. SCP-6596 opens a refrigerator Finding it to be empty, it does the same for the other three refrigerators and five freezers. All are empty. 1023. SCP-6596 exits into the main cafeteria room. Agents slowly approach the entity. 1024. Two agents flank behind SCP-6596. The agents unholster and activate their non-lethal weapons. They dash at the entity. The first leaps, aiming for the head and upper chest, while the other reaches for SCP-6596's legs. SCP-6596 quickly demanifests. 10.25. Surveillance footage shows SCP-6596 in the Floor 2 cafeteria. Agents pursue SCP-6596 as it swiftly maneuvers through in the storage compartment, once again finding no food items. 1031. Agents enter the cafeteria. SCP-6596 snaps its jaw twice at the agent and demanifests from its location. 1032. Footage shows SCP-6596 in Site-120's Floor 1 office space. 
He entity weaves his way through each hallway, searching for blank white printer paper. It removes any it comes across and places the pieces under its cloth. 1034. SCP-6596 finds the copier and removes all blank pieces of paper from it. After another sweep of the area, SCP-6596 demanifests from its location. 1036. SCP-6596 is seen on footage in the basement storage room. It goes through the large area before finding the office supply section. It removes any ream of white paper it finds and places it under its cloth. Agents pursue its location. 1045. As agents approach, SCP-6596 vanishes from the basement, reappearing in the floor 2 office space. For the next 28 minutes, SCP-6596 evades capture while stealing every piece of blank white paper it comes across. 1115. SCP-6596 manifests in front of Director Ashworth. Oh crap! Ashworth sounds his security alarm. SCP-6596 approaches Director Ashworth, cornering him. It places its snout a few centimeters from Ashworth's nose. It pauses for three seconds, then snaps its jaw three times, makes a noise akin to laughing, and he manifests at 11.17. Afterward, later inquiry found that SCP-6596 had taken every piece of blank white paper Site 120 had in stock. Due to the nearby holiday, Site 120 was unable to receive a new shipment of paper until the next month. Addendum 6596-1 A bridge log of SCP-6596 related offense. 2005 None first incident. 12 kilograms of frozen chicken. 4 boxes of fajitum MIEs. Meal, ready to eat rations of food meant to be eaten by deployed military personnel. And two vending machines. 2006. None. Another interaction was unexpected. All fresh or frozen vegetables on site. A combined 1,400 pounds of various cuts of beef and pork. All cheese on site. All bread on site. And two bottles of Mountain Dew. Baja Blast, originally purchased by Director Ashworth. 2009. Kitchens and office spaces were locked and secured. Mobile Task Force agents were dispersed throughout the site. Four doors originally installed in the cafeteria. Ten liters of chicken noodle soup. Four cases of light beer. A case of candy canes. The site's entire supply of fish patties. 2013, the removal of all food or loose items in every miscellaneous item SCP-6596 had previously stolen. 14 windows, 3 recontainment fans, SCP-048, and every CPU and Site-120 computers. 2017, a molecular translocator developed by Dr. Edison Rostov was placed at all entrances of Site-120 and would transport SCP-6596 during experimental reality anchored containment chamber under Site-19. Dr. Edison Wolfstorff Addendum 6596-2 Site-120 Mandate To Site-120 personnel, as I'm sure you're all aware that it's that time of year again. I think it has been a decade of me claiming this. But this time, I think we have something that will work. Next week, expect the following items to be missing from Site 120. Desks, tables, doors, windows, paper items, writing utensils, eating utensils, fire extinguishers, all food items, water fountains. Basically, if we can take it, basically, if we can take it and move it somewhere else, we are going to do that to protect our facility. During the week preceding this, we ask that all Site-120 personnel completely remove any and all items from their offices, workstations, and or sleeping quarters, and either take them home or relocate them to Professional Site-121, which we will operate in preparation for 
and during the SCP-6596 attack, Rogue did it this year, Director Daniel Ashworth. Following the release of this mandate, preparations began for the year's SCP-6596 event. Professional Site-121 was connected remotely to Site-120 surveillance and PA system. Deferring from the previous SCP-6596 event, the person designated to respond to SCP-6596's statement will invite the entity in. Addendum 6596-3 Incident 6596-2020 Transcript Begin Log 12.04 Site surveillance systems are alerted to an unknown entity at the southeast entrance checkpoint. It's been quite some time since our friendship began. I've been honest and humble when I come, my good man. I entreat you again with great thirst and hunger. My dear friend, sadly, we're getting no younger. A tasty meal and some hearty drink is all that I need. I'll be gone in a blink. I should speak honestly before we begin. This wonderful place has nothing within. This year is distinct from the last, you see. I implore your entry. Come on in, pretty please. SCP-6596 stares into the camera in confusion for a moment before demanifesting and reappearing in Site-120's cafeteria. The entity spends the next 30 minutes running through the floors of the site, searching through empty closets, offices, common rooms, and storage spaces. 1239. SCP-6596 approaches a surveillance camera and places its jaws a few centimeters from the lens. A trick, a gaff, you think me a fool. No gifts, food, or drink. Now that is uncool. You think me a joke after all these years. I must have had proven my power, I fear. You call my home the land with no name. This year your titles shall be what I claim. I'll take this place, since it seems you've got plenty. Say goodbye to your precious 120. Along with this, your name from birth. No longer are you Daniel Ashworth. 1244. A strong breeze moves through professional site 121. The Thaumaturge Site Director clutches his head, as if in pain. Neither party speaks for two minutes. Oh, crap! 12.48. SCP-6596 snaps his jaw twice at the camera before demanifesting. And no. A recursive counterspell is being developed to reclaim the names of the Grand Thaumist and the Polish Secure Containment Facility. It will be employed following the full return of personnel to the disguised industrial complex.